everyone. I am Jaydeep, your evening host at Adore. Before we dive in, let me give you a quick glimpse into Adore. Adore is a global network of students and young professionals like yourself. All passionate about inspiring you to make a positive impact. We connect you with established professionals and offers a platform to learn from their journeys. Now, on behalf of Team Maverick and Adore, we are thrilled to welcome you to this webinar on how to win almost every interview invited. To make this session even more engaging, we kindly request everyone to switch on their cameras. And now, the moment we all have waiting for our esteemed guest speaker for tonight is Mr. Jude. Mr. Jude is a sessional accountant and qualified professional. He has many years of experience in the health sector and is a member of the National Academy for Public Service Leadership. Mr. Jude, it's true honor to have you with us today. We are all eager to gain valuable insights from your experience, expertise. Mr. Jude, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Hope you are. You can all hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, uh, we can hear you. All right, all right. Sorry, um, I had to find a spot where I can, like, do this. I was at work, so um, I had to take permission and then run away in able to, so I can be able to communicate with you. So if you look properly, um, in a place, a basement where I can just hide myself to talk for um a little time, right? I believe yes, yes. um this good time that we can actually discuss that it's really going to be very fruitful. Okay. Um, I really welcome each and every one of you to this session. It's um I'm actually very glad that I'll be speaking to you guys on this subject matter for so many reasons. For so so many years, right? Um, back in 2019, 2020, um, I had like a backlog of interviews that I attended that was not fruitful. But then over time, I decided to um take like lots of courses, and then yeah, I was able to overcome like those fears and all. So interviews were not really really hard again from that time. But there are specific things. I did, which I would be sharing with you from the abundance of my experience, okay? So I welcome each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for joining. I'm so glad that um, this is being recorded. At least um, other people can still listen to it um, in some other time, okay? So thank you so much for joining. All right, so I'm not really going to take like much of our time. So I will try as much as possible to be very brief so that um, we can go back to the individual things we're doing. So, all right, so let me start with introduction. Now, um, if you look at the subject matter, winning every interview. Many people would think or like gradually assume that, oh, let's just go and look at how to win interviews. But then they neglect certain kind of things. Please, if you stop hearing me at any point, just let me know so I can repeat myself. Or if I'm talking so fast, you can let me know too so I can um, bring down the pace at which I'm talking, okay? So um, first off, when we start talking about winning interviews, people think that to win interviews, you need to start first from where you've gotten the interviews. No, for you to effectively win any interview like that you will ever attend, the first thing you must do, it starts from the application when you start sending out the application generally, okay? So interviews are not won from maybe when you attend the interviews interviews are won from the moment you start sending out the application. For you to win an interview, you need to first of all get the interview. So one of the things we are going to discuss um, during the course of this conversation is 
how do you even get the interviews in the first place? It's when you now get the interviews that you can now start talking about how to effectively win the interviews. Trust me, it's really going to be awesome. Okay, let me position my camera properly so that um, there are certain things you must watch out for in the process of winning interviews. And there are like four of them, right? The first one is that you must understand the key elements of successful interviews. Now, when we start speaking about key elements of successful interviews, we start speaking about the invitation. Now, for invitation to happen, there are certain things you must do. Then you, you have to consider the preparation phase. Then you have to consider the communication and the follow-up. Now, there is a reason why I have itemized these things in this way. You don't win interviews from the preparation part or from the follow-up. Now, even if you have been invited for an interview, until there is the preparation phase, which happens on two parts. Now, your individual preparation and the preparation you do when you eventually get to the venue or whatever kind of interview you are doing, there are certain kind of things you must put in place in order to ensure that your interview is very successful. Now, let's move to the next slide. Now, before then, first, in 2000 and 2020, I attended a job interview and I understood certain things. I mean, I've been opportunity to work for HEC recruitment, right? Now, HEC recruitment, their job basically is to ensure that, oh, we recruit people or recruit employees from different spheres of the world for different companies. So what we do basically is when we recruit this person, we interview them. But our interview process doesn't start from when the person comes for the interview. It starts with when the person starts applying for the role, what kind or what's the nature of the person's resume and the person's cover letter, what, um, how does this person follow up the process, the kind of responses you give, how do you communicate with the email that um, sent you this address, the job application and all of that? These are the things we consider into details, right? Before we can say, oh, let's even invite this person for interview. Secondly, you need to understand that when we start speaking about um, inviting someone for an interview, for you to be successful in any interview, there are two things you must consider. The first one is, what is my relevance? For in this company? These are like the questions you must ask yourself. What is my relevance? You are not the only person asking yourself, asking this question. The firm or the company recruiting you will obviously ask, why should we hire this person? They might not necessarily ask you, but when they are going through your application, they can ask themselves, why should we hire this person? For a firm or an industry to send out application generally to um, invite you for an interview, they always check, why do we need an extra staff? So these are the questions you must ask yourself in the process of like um, preparing for interview. Why should this firm hire you? The second thing you must consider is if there are 100 people coming for the interview, what extra would you do for them to pick you out of the other 100 people that apply for the job application? Now, trust me, if you're applying for job um, interview for, if you're applying for like job interview and you are sending out your applications, right? Basically, now this, if it's a top tier firm, they use AI and some technology in order to sieve out certain individuals, right? And the mistake people make, one of the mistakes people make is that they tend to send out application that are AI generated, it has AI generated contents. So when, if it's AI that it's saving your CVs and then it eventually finds that, okay, the content on this person's CV is AI generated, automatically it's going to sieve out your CV. So the mistake, one of the first mistake people do during the application process is that they send out application or the CV, cover letters and all of that, that are being generated by AI. So if you send out such information and AI detects it, the AI automatically discards your application. So 
if you have your CV and you've been applying for certain kind of roles, the reason, one of the reasons why you've not been getting invite, invites from different firms, organizations, industries that you've been applying for is because because of your CV, the nature of your CV, right? Then secondly, the nature of your cover letter. So as much as you would want to use AI to generate content, right, for your CV or cover letter generally, you need to ensure that when AI generates this content, you need to make it as human as possible. That's the first one. Secondly, you need to ensure that um, the keywords for the, for the particular role you're applying for are emphatic on your CV. For instance, if you're applying for the role of a sales agent, right? There are certain keywords that must be found on your cover letter and then on your CV, right? Because um, the way it works is the AI generated, the AI that actually sieve out CV looks for particular keywords and if it's not there, it will automatically sieve out your application. Trust me, if you normally apply for a job, you obviously be seeing lots of, unfortunately, you went through your CV, unfortunately. Think about it. If you check the statistics of people that are looking for job, right? For instance, in Nigeria, it's over <laughs> millions because people keep graduating from school, keep graduating from school, and then very few uh, been employed by this kind of firm that we even want to apply for, right? So you need to ensure that, oh, this particular role I'm applying for, does my capability or my capacity run in line with this? Secondly, does my CV and my experiences align with the role I'm applying for, okay? Then thirdly, how do I ensure that, oh, um, whatever thing I'm bringing to the table cannot be brought by every other person that is coming for this interview. Now, the, why am I saying this? People encounter questions during interviews and they are like, okay, so how do I answer this? So these are like basic questions you must ask yourself. What am I going to bring that other people cannot bring to the table? Now, if other people can bring this to the table and I can also bring it to the table, what unique experience do I have to offer that other people cannot offer? Okay, so let's let's get down to this. So I started with the fact that that your application, your application, you must determine the kind of job you want. Trust me, because people are looking for a job. One of the mistakes they make is that oh, they end up applying for all every kind of job right? They want to apply. They are looking for a job. They are very desperate. They want to meet and need and all. So they apply for video editing. They apply for um, content creator. They apply for um, sales rep, real estate, you know, all those kind of jobs that we, we all see online, right? So, but then if you must effectively get an invite, right, for a job application, you need to first check yourself. So what can I do? What can I properly do? What am I good at? For instance, I'm very good when it comes to sales, right? So if I want to apply for job roles, I'm going to look out for maybe relationship management jobs, right? Accounting jobs, um, content creation and all whatnot, right? So the first mistake people make is that they tend to apply for every kind of job they see online. Oh, they see graphic design, they just apply, um, apply. they see content creation, they just apply and all of that. Trust me, you are going to get rejected over time. So ensure you know what you are good at and ensure you know, oh, this is my capability and this is the kind of job I want. Be specific and be a BA master of what you're applying for. Then the second thing is ensure you dust your CV. Many of us, the last time you visited your CV was like maybe 10 years ago, right? So if the last time you visited your CV or your cover letter was 10 years ago, trust me, there are certain changes. The industry keeps improving and it will keep improving over time. So if the last time you visited your CV was 10 years ago, five years ago, and then there are like lots of improvements, right? If you submit your CV and your cover letter, trust me, you are going to get rejected because if your CV and your cover letter might not necessarily match the specifications of um, the job roles that you are applying for. So even if you have experience, think about it. You might 
be very good in video editing, content creation, and all of that, right? But if your CV and your cover letter does not match the specifications of the job role you are applying for, you will definitely get rejected, right? Except for maybe some firms that might give you the opportunity to come and showcase um, what you have or what you can bring to the table generally, right? So these are like one of the things you must um, look out for. Then apply massively. You see, because of the number of people that are looking for jobs, you have to apply massively. The truth is, when um, I think the first interview I got, one of the things I did was to ensure I apply for 20, I, I send out 20 to 30 job applications daily. So imagine 20 to 30 job applications. Let's use 20. 20 multiplied by 7 is um, 140, right? So 140 application in a week multiplied by four, which is close to 500, or is it 400 and something, right? So imagine sending over 450 applications in a month. It's impossible for you not to get 10 to 15 invites in a month. Yes, the statistic is every 10 job application you send out, you must at least get to invite, except if your CV and your resume are not um, in alignment with the job specification you are sending out. So, but if they are in right proportion, right, and you are able to send out applications massively every day, trust me, you must get invites, okay? So for some of you that might ask, so how do I send out over 20, 30 applications? It's very simple. One of the things I do before I start applying for jobs, or maybe I, I want to apply for the role of a relationship manager, is to look out for firms that might be looking for a relationship manager, right? One, then I look out for firms that might be um, might be lag lagging um, marketing roles, right? Then I apply and send out my CVs. Um, in my cover letter, I always ensure that, oh, I pen down, these are the things I'm going to bring to the table if eventually you hire me, which I strongly believe you must hire me, right? Because of my vast experience over the course of the years, right? So when I send out these applications, I ensure that, oh, okay, I find out to, um, maybe about five to six sites that might be, I might um, send out my applications to. So for each of the sites, I send out about five applications. Then maybe on Indeed, I send out five applications, Jobberman, five applications, Remote.co, five applications, five applications to like six different firms. That multiplies to 30. So in a day, I send out 30 applications. So from these 30 applications, I might get rejected um, yeah, during the course of the invitation, right? But then it's impossible for you not to get at least three to four invitation if you send. Okay, so sorry about that. My network went off. All right, so are you here? Yes, yes, you are audible. Okay, thank you. So um, I was speaking about the sites that um, you need You need to first of all identify the sites you apply with. Now, there are certain sites that obviously firms are comfortable putting up their job applications to. For instance, I use Indeed a lot. I use Indeed, I-N-D-E-E-D. -E -E I believe each and every one of you know Indeed. And then how it works is you can set your preference to maybe a particular country, or you can even apply for remote jobs using Indeed. You can use remote.co if you're applying for remote jobs. If you're applying for content creation job, there is Alpha Novel. There are lots of them. There are lots of sites you can actually apply for. So when you identify this site, you send out applications massively. Ensure you send out at least 20 to 30 applications daily to be on a safer side. So, all right, please let's go to the next slide. So, so far, remember we started with the fact that um, for you to win an interview that starts from the application process. So how do you prepare your applications? How do you send out these applications? So that's where it starts from. So it's until your application, your CV and your cover letter are in right proportion, then you can even get invited. So now let's get to the main thing because the, um, the main 
theme of this conversation revolves around you winning the interviews, right? But then I had to start from you getting the interviews so that when we get to you winning it, you know, it's like um, obviously going to um, be easy. I'm going to pause my video so that it doesn't disrupt my network. Hope you don't mind. Is that guys? Are you here? Yeah. 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 Hello. Guys, are you here? Yes. 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 Okay. Hello. I, yeah. Can I pause my video so that the network oh, yes, can yes, be? Yes. Yeah. You can pause. Sir. All right. All right. All right. So um, now during the preparation, I'm sorry about um, I'm sorry about the PPT I sent because they are it's a bit um shallow, but just ensure you're listening to me carefully because I'm going to give lots of details about this, right? Now, during the preparation, there are certain things you must pay attention to. When you, you are now being invited for the interview, there are certain key things you must pay attention to, right? Now, I didn't write this down, but let me say it. Until you convince yourself that you are going to win the interview. Trust me, you are going to fail when you get there. That's just the truth. Once you are able to convince yourself that, okay, um, I've gotten enough information and I'm ready for the whatever kind of question that will be thrown to me, then trust me, you are not going to win the interview. So the first thing, the first um, preparation process is by you convincing yourself that, okay, I am going to win this interview. Many people fail out during interview because, oh, irrespective of the fact that they are um, qualified for the role, but because of the fact that they, can't, they are scared, they are not bold, and then they can't really or necessarily present whatever expertise and experiences they have to the interviewer, they tend to lose out of the position. So organizations are not just looking for people that have experience. They are looking for people who have experience and then this set of people are bold and then they can stand up for whatever thing they, um, they represent and their experiences generally, right? For instance, there was this job application I sent out and I got invited for the interview. I went there and I was scared, very scared to the point that uh, when the when questions were thrown at me, I, I I didn't even know what to answer. But was I experienced? Yes, I was. I had um, three years experience in that line of job, right? But then because I was not comfortable, right, and then I was not good generally in and of itself. I was unable to um, pass this interview. Now I noticed that certain people generally. People, the person that eventually got this job we are, was less experienced than than me, but then I didn't get in, I didn't get the job because I was not um bold enough to answer these questions. Now, so the first preparation starts with you convincing yourself. How do you convince yourself? You need to keep telling yourself, I know this and I can pass this. Then the second thing you need to do is to Practice every likely questions. Now, likely questions revolves around just three things. Please pay attention to what I'm saying. It revolves around three things. The likely question revolves around the, um, the position or the role you are applying for. So if you're applying for the role of a relationship manager, you need to um, ensure that, oh, you read up about relationship management generally, right? And the second thing you need to do, apart from reading out about the role, is to read up about the company. For instance, if you apply for the role of a relationship management in a bank, you need to ask yourself, okay, what does the role of a relationship management entails in the banking sector? Right? One, one of the first things it, it involves is that you must, first of all, um, you must know that you need to get clients who will open accounts with the bank, clients who will take loans from the bank and all of that. These are like your job specifications, right? So if you read up about this, you can effectively answer like whatever questions they are going to throw at you in the light of the role you are applying for. So the mistake people make basically is that they go for interviews without necessarily studying about the role they are applying for. So when questions are asked, 
generally in the light of the rules they are applying for, they don't tend to have the answers to it. And that becomes very problematic. So you need to ensure you study about the role you are applying for one. You need to ensure you study about um, the organization or the firm or the industry you are applying for. Then probably you need to ensure you study about the executives or whoever, um, whoever is in charge, right? For instance, there was this job, there was this interview I went for. And one of the questions they asked me was, um, so who is the president of this organization? And <laughs> funny enough, I read, I just, I read about it when I was sitting there before they like called me up to face the panelists. So I had to answer, I say, oh, and these are like the morals of the organization. These are like the things um, this organization or this person represents. So it's, if you can talk about the organization, even before you get the job, they will, they will definitely think or believe that, okay, this person is smart. This person um, basically studies about the organization. It's someone that is um, quite detailed and all of that. So it's very important to pay attention to all of this. Now, before you go for the interview, you need to first ask yourself, um, questions like assuming you could be you could recommend improvement now i mean during the interview when you are done with the interview you okay during the interview let me let me point this out during the interview you need to ensure you are bold quite bold you don't need to be scared why because it's like one of the things you are doing there is sharing your experience right and one major question they always ask during interviews comes from your CV, they will want to ask you, why should we hire your one? They could ask you questions like, um, assuming we don't hire you, what are you going to do about that? Then totally, they could ask you questions like, um, I'm just thinking about the possible questions they could ask you, right? They could ask you about job specifications and all of that. But then when you're answering these questions, ensure that they are in line with the role you applied for. Now, one tricky question um, every interviewer usually asks is, um, why did you leave your current role? I believe if you've um, actually attended lots of interviews, you must have like, heard this question over and over again. Why did you leave your previous role? Okay, so think about it. Many people make the mistake of trying to say that, oh, I left my current role because uh, the, the environment was toxic, um, this person, this, that, that, the boss was bad and all of that. That's a red mark because the company that wants to hire you would think that, oh, so if we hire you and eventually we tend to sack you and all of that, if you are not being productive, it means that when you go for other interviews, you are going to speak ill of the company. So when you are when during your interview, and you have been, you, if you have been asked, why did you leave your current role? Ensure you don't talk down on your preview, the former place of work, like your former place of work. Tell them, oh, that you needed to improve more, uh, but your previous uh, place of work could not offer the level of improvement that you were looking out for. That's the reason why you left. If they ask for specifications, you could point out one, two, three areas of um of your job role that think that were hindering your growth as a person, and then that was hindering your growth in that particular place. But ensure you don't speak ill of um, your former place of work. It doesn't work. If I am, if I am, if I'm the one interviewing you, and I ask you why you left your former place of work, and then you start speaking ill of where you were working before, trust me, I will not hire you because. If after a year I tend to sack you and all, you would want the um, probability that you won't speak ill of my own firm to other firms, right? You see, that's quite bad for business, right? So ensure that your response must come in line with um, the positive side. All right. So before you go, before you go, this this before you go, people make mistakes of oh, um, when the interviewer asks them questions, do you have any question before you go? Many of them will say no, and then they will leave. Trust me, it shows two things. One, it shows you are not even paying attention to the questions that were being asked, and then it shows you are not actually quite detailed. So before you go, there are like lots of questions you could ask. Now, one of the questions I ask before. Like if the interviewer should ask me, oh, do you have any questions and all of that? I ask them, 
as you know, would recommend ways for me to improve and the light of this interview, what would it be? Now, the reason why I ask this question is so that they could tell me, okay, this, 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 during your interview, you couldn't answer this right, or we were not really satisfied with this. And then <laughs> when they're able to tell you that, it means you now have the opportunity to answer that question again in a better light, okay? So second thing you need to ask them is to, Tell them to um, emphasize more about the role you applied for. Okay, they need to tell you, okay, um, this is what I think about this role. This is what I believe that this role should be about, right? So if they tell you this, then tell them, oh, please, can you tell me um, other side of this role that um, I didn't necessarily get so that I can improve on it or study more on it or um, in the light of the, um, the firm or the organization or the industry you applied for, what does this show? How does it connect, right? How does it connect? How do I improve in it generally? So the reason why you do this is to ensure that, oh, there is a communication between the interviewer and then the interviewee, like you are the person being interviewed and then there is the interviewer. So ensure you ask this question so that there could be um, communication. And then um, interviews are not necessarily questions and answer. Okay? Interviews are not questions and answer. Interview, interviews are like communication. You know the way I'm talking to you and now you can listen to me when you're talking, I can listen to you. It's a conversation. So if Whenever you're going for an interview, always think about it as you're going out, hanging out with a friend, right? But in an official setting. So if you are facing panelists, just think about it. Oh, I have my friend, a couple of friends, and then we are just having conversations. So if they ask you questions, you can answer them. You know the way you relate with people that are close to you and well, that's how it should be. Let it just flow. Don't be scared and all of that. Now, when you are gone and they, will, they could say things like, oh, we'll get back to you and all of that. Don't wait, always wait for them to get back to you. Always try to follow up, send them, send them messages, send them emails. Oh, that in the light of the interview you came for, that you want to know oh, what's the progress report and all of that, right? That way it could um, sell a thought to them that, okay, this person is quite serious about this show. Because think about it. If 100 people should apply for a role and the 100 people have the same capacity or capability to like do the same job, why should they hire you? So it's the tiny things that you do that actually matters, right? So irrespective of your experience and all of that, the tiny things you do really, really matters. You need to follow up. You need to send messages. If possible, call. Tell them you want to know the progress of your application or the progress of the interview you did, right? That, oh, yeah, this is what I am bringing to the table generally, okay? So in conclusion... In conclusion, right, you need to understand certain things when it comes to interview. Thank God we are at this point. Now, during interviews, there are certain things you must understand. Let me share a story with you. I applied for the role of a direct sales agent once with um, one popular bank in my country, right? It's called Nexim Bank. Now, this bank, the role of the direct sales agent entails that, oh, okay, you are going to go out there and you are going to definitely get clients for the bank. So um, the specification, one of the specifications entails that you must leave the office every day by eight, which means you need to be in the office as early as seven, right? And then when you leave the office by eight, you need to be back by four. Now, the truth is, this particular role was, um, hello guys, can you hear me? Are you here? Atrav? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I was not seeing movement, so I, I thought um, that the network had like stopped again. So I was speaking about the job role I, I sent out, right? I was speaking about the job um, application I sent out for the role of a direct sales agent. Then I was speaking about the fact that um, one of the specifications, right, 
entails that, oh, you need to go out by this time, you need to come back by this time and all of that because it's a marketing job, right? So the second specification was that I need to get high net clients. So I was, during the interview, I was asked, so how do you intend to get these clients? Knowing fully well that, oh, these clients, think about it. If you're going to get high net clients, you need to have connections. So if you don't have connection, how do you get these high net clients? Think about it, right? So I they asked me the strategy I was going to use because there were over 50 people that came for the interview and none of them like had the perfect strategy. I now remembered during my practice, like my, um, my preparation stage before the interview, I encountered two sets of people. The first is... The, the people closest to the high net people. And then because, because I encountered the set of people, I was able to gain access to the high net people. Now, the strategy I shared was simple. I said, um, if you apply for the role of a direct sales agent and your, your, your specification, your job specification is to get high net clients, one of the things you must not look down or play down on is the, the process of getting or communicating with people that are closest to them. How do you even get connection with these people? You need to keep reaching out and then referrals. The cleaner or the or gate man or whoever, the, you know, when I'm mentioning these people, I'm speaking about the lowest ranking staff in your house generally, right? So those cleaners, those um, gate men, gate women, and all of that that you look down on, they know people that know people that know people that are rich. Yes, they might not be rich. They might not be the high net like you might think, but they know people that know people that know people. So I told them that I will start with the most common men. Now, when I speak with the most common men, I'm not expecting them to buy my product or to be able to invest in my firm, right? Now, I'm speaking to them so that they can be able to refer me to someone higher than them. So when I speak with someone higher than them, the people higher than them can now speak with people that are higher than them. So it's a hierarchy. It keeps rising and rising. But then it starts with um, the referral called tree. Okay, it starts with the referral call tree. You know, when you plant a, a seed, it doesn't just germinate to become a tree, right? It first of all dies and then it starts growing and then growing until it can become a tree generally. That's how it works. So everybody is important. Don't look down on anybody, no matter how small the person is. I'm speaking about this in the last work. All right, so in conclusion, winning interviews must start from the process of you are applying and preparing for the interview. Interviews are not wrong when you go for the interview. It starts from your application. What's the nature of the application you are sending out? And then how prepared are you for the interviews? All right, thank you so much. Um, because of time, I think I need to stop here. Thank you so much. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you, Mr. Jude. I request the participants to submit their doubts and questions in the chat box, and Mr. Jude will accordingly answer it. All right, guys, please ensure you ask your questions. Um, I know you must have like attended like lots of interviews and like they are not successful. So feel free to ask questions in maybe there are places I didn't touch. Okay, uh, how should, someone just asked, how should candidates handle, okay, 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 uh, okay, I'm seeing two questions. Okay, maybe just send all your questions and then I will answer them one after the other. If you have more questions asked, I will just answer them all together. Any more questions? one then and then the second one if your other ones then um i'll keep answering so the first question asks how should candidates handle difficult or unexpected questions are we are you, are you hearing me guys are you yes, hearing me guys yes. okay good good so how can candidates okay this is another question 
Sorry, let me take this up so I can see the questions. All right. Okay, so the first question, how should candidates handle difficult or unexpected questions? Well, the truth is, if you have been asked a difficult question, the first thing you must tell yourself is that there is no difficult question. But if you tell me unexpected question, then I would agree with you, right? So let's assume you have been asked an unexpected question, like unlikely question, right? One of the things you must do, you know, um, one of one mistake people make is when questions have been asked, they want to rush in and respond. No, don't be in a hurry to answer questions. So if you're being asked an unexpected question, one of the things I do or the ones I did was to um, tell the person to, please, can you repeat the question in another light? So why the person is trying to explain the question again, I'm thinking about the best possible answer to give. Secondly, please, if questions, if an unexpected question are being asked, please don't leave it. Don't tell them you don't know. Mm -mm, don't do that, please. If questions are being asked, don't tell them you don't know. You must attempt the question. So for me to buy time, I always tell them, please, can you ask the question again, but this time giving instances or giving example in the light of the question that, were, that was being asked. So why the person is trying to ask this question again, maybe in another light, I'm thinking about the responses to give. So it is called unexpected because you didn't think about it, right? So when they are trying to rephrase the question or ask the question again, it's no longer unexpected because you're already thinking about the answer. Do you understand that? So the always, like I told you, it's like a communication. If you're communicating with someone, it's possible you might not hear the person or you might not understand what the person is saying. What's the most polite thing to do? You tell the person to repeat it um, himself or herself, right? So in the process of the person doing that same thing, you would most likely um, think about answers you can give. But never you leave any question blank during an interview. Give an answer no matter how little the answer is secondly now when you are done with this interview and um if you feel the response you gave was not necessarily perfect you can ask you can ask them or ask your interviewer oh please you asked me this question i don't think um i answered perfectly so can you please tell me what you expected me and the reason why they are telling you so that in case you encounter such questions in the future, you can effectively answer them. So never leave any question unanswered, no matter how difficult they are. I believe that answers it, okay? So um, the second question says, how do you build, how can a candidate build, is it confidence? How can a candidate build confidence and reduce interview anxiety? Are, are you saying something? I think someone is trying to talk, right? I can't hear you. No, 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 no. Okay, Aman, I thought you are trying to talk. Okay, all right. So the second question is, how can candidates build confidence and reduce interview anxiety? Now, let me tell you a, a very short story. I had um my one of my bosses works with um a radio station, sorry, television station. Now she told me that. Anytime she's going to present that she suffers anxiety, right? Her body will start shaking. She's always scared. But then the moment she starts speaking, everything just dies down. Now, she shared to, I asked her how to handle it. And then she shared this strategy and then it worked because I applied it and it worked for me. I used to, whenever I go for an interview, I'm always scared, trying to be scared. I noticed that one of the reasons why I'm always scared is because I'm not um, truly in line with 
the application, for instance, if I apply for the job of a relationship manager, sorry, I'm using job relationship manager over time. If I apply for the role of a relationship manager and I study about relationship management because I have lots of information, you need to get lots of information about the role you're applying for. And I have lots of information about this particular role. The anxiety is not obviously not going to be strong. Secondly, when you are doing your interview, ensure Ensure if, if you are feeling anxious, don't be scared to tell them, oh, please, can I get a bottle of water? I did that like during the, my last interview. I went there, I think I was facing seven panelists, right? And they were, I knew they were going to ask me difficult questions, right? My, I think my leg was shaking. Then I looked at them and I told them, please, can I get a bottle of water? Because I know the moment I start speaking, that anxiety will naturally start dropping down. So look them eyeball to eyeball. They are your fellow human being. <laughs> the difference between you and them is that they are the ones offering you the job and then you are the one bringing your experience to the table. So look them eyeball to eyeball, practice the question and don't be scared. So if you know that, if you're anxious and you know that when they ask you a question that you might mess up the question, don't start answering questions immediately. Tell them, oh, please, can I get a bottle of water? Or please, can I use the restroom? All of this is a tactic for you to gain your ground. When that is done, then you can now go back and then effectively answer questions. I don't know if this addresses. Um... Okay, now to the third question. I think this is the last question. You say, how important is body language in an interview? And what should candidate be mindful of? Now, this is a very important question. Please, when you go for an interview, I'm sure I didn't point this out when I was teaching. When you go for an, a job interview, your body language is very, very important and very essential. Very, very important. Now, you don't just slouch because that's not your pattern, right? You don't just... Um, you don't just go for an interview and then you slouch. You need to sit up. When you are speaking, if possible, use your hand or use illustrations. And hey, I forgot to mention this. When you are, when you are giving, um, giving responses to questions that are being asked, especially in the light of your previous role, please ensure you use analogies, right? If you are trying to explain, oh, I did this, I did that, ensure you use analogies, right? Oh, during this time, I was able to accomplish this. I did this with this particular organization. I did that with that particular organization and generally, right? So when you're giving analogies, it's like shows that, oh, this person actually knows what he or she um, is doing. All right, please. I don't know. Is there another question? Trying to check. I think this is like the last well, question, right? Yeah. Is that another question? question? That's the last question, right? Yeah. All right. All right. So I believe I was able to like answer or give. But if you if you uh if there are questions you believe that you were not satisfied with, so you can throw them back. I will try to as much as possible to answer them again. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So as we are near the closing ceremony, before we depart, we would like to thank Mr. Jude, Dinesh sir, Simran ma'am, Prajipta sir, and my dear team members for making this webinar a success. Adore connects you with established professionals and offers a platform to earn from their journeys. So if anyone is interested, you can visit the website. We have shared a link. Yeah. We have shared a link in the chat box. We request you to give uh, your valuable feedbacks. Once again, okay. thank you everyone for joining. The webinar right. is now completed and you may now right. leave. Thank, yeah, thank you, you um, uh, Atra Raj. Take care of yourself. We'll see you guys later. Thanks. Thanks.